Okay. Um, I, I see that uh, Barbara and Tom seem to be here. So uh, it's 301. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, I know that this was a, uh, a big holiday weekend. Uh, so for anyone uh, like our family who celebrated Passover, I hope you had a happy one. And for everybody else who celebrated Easter, I hope that yours was joyous as well. We're going to uh, call the uh, roll of uh, make sure everybody's here. Uh, Dave Cahill. Here. Uh, Thomas Hauser. Here. Thanks, Tom. Barbara McKenzie. Here. Thanks, Barbara. Um, uh, Deborah will not be joining, so it'll just be the, uh, the four of us. Uh, pursuant to California Government Code Section 54953, all votes during this teleconference meeting shall be taken by roll call. So next is uh, public appearances, members of the public who wish to address the commission regarding matters not on the agenda. Jen, do we have uh, any members of the public who are here or who submitted written comments to you? We don't have any members of the public here in the meeting and I did not receive any email comments either. Okay, well then let's, let's move quickly into the, uh, the financial reports. Um, first, just a, a quick reminder to everybody, uh, we're looking at reports through the end of March. Uh, so in terms of sales tax revenue, we have seven months of the year. That would mean we'd, uh, on a straight line basis, be expecting about 58.3% of our uh, budgeted amount. We're actually a bit above that at 62.4%. For expenses, uh, we're nine months into the year. So we would be expecting, again, on a straight line basis, our expenses to be about 75% of uh, budgeted amounts. Um, Mirna, I'm going to, I'm going to jump right to the chase here uh, and ask about something that's not on the report. We're eagerly awaiting the second property tax uh, report. Do you have any information uh, about what the library will be receiving? Yes, um, it is good news. Uh, the the um, second installment of property tax that was due on April 11th has been posted. It is $9.3 million. So with that, uh, we have met our budget target of $22.6 million. Uh, and so any, there, any other receipts that are posted for um, uh, May and June will be a surplus. And normal, it is, it is typical that there will be um, receipts during those two months. Are, are those just late payments that are trailing in? Yes. Okay. So good news. We've, we've met our, uh, our budgeted uh, property tax dollars uh, very, very uh, close to the budget. Uh, good predicting. And uh, sales tax continues to uh, be a little bit ahead of what we've budgeted, which is great. Um, I'll just ask for questions on the, uh, on the summary page. Any questions from anyone on the uh, committee? I, I, I do want to just to add on the expenditure, Please. on the expenditure side that, um, as you noted, Chair Elkind, um, expenditures are trending under budget. So now that third quarter has come at the you know, end of March, um, we're asking or I'm asking division managers to review their budget again, uh, just so that there is a check before the year end to see 
um, um, you know, how their expenditures are going. So if there is any, or if there, if we, if the budget, is, if the expenditures are under budget, that will also be a surplus at the end of the year. Right, and it, and it looks like they are significantly under budget. I'm, I'm only seeing two categories that are higher than we would expect at this time, uh, rents, leases, and other contract services. I, I did have a question for you, Myrna, about the rents and leases roll up that we see here on the summary page. If, mm -hmm. I, if I were to look back at the detail report, uh, let's use, for example, the property tax report. If I were to look back, can you, can you just call out the specific line items that would roll up here? I'm, I'm looking at, I'm starting around 51401, which is rents and leases equipment. Mm -hmm. And I see rents and leases building land. Yes. Is it is it, um, is it just uh, those two, or it looks like there's another, some other small amounts that get rolled up into there? Yeah, those are, those are the main, main ones that are uh, under rents and leases. There's equipment, um, building and land. Uh, those are the primary ones that would be rolling up in there. Okay. Um, I have, I have, two questions for the members of the committee on the financial reports. The first is, and, and Myrna, thanks to you and your team and, and uh, Randy and his team for continuing to provide these very detailed and uh, really excellent reports. My first uh, question is anybody on the committee have any questions on any of the detail reports that we received? I had just one, Myrna, and I, I and, and if you want to hold off on answering it until you get there, it's okay. But I'm looking at the uh, page seven, uh, other contract services, and I see that next to uh, the P and A group, where it says uh, you know there's a thirty-eight thousand dollar expense for HRA contributions, there's an asterisk and it says coding error to be reclassified. I know you're going to be reporting on coding errors and the reclassification. Uh, is that the only one you're aware of on this report that that's, is still waiting to be uh, put back in the right place? No, the others are the up on top. It says Selco uh, partnership. Yes. That is that is um, uh, uh, um, that should not be under contract services. It should be under wireless services. Okay. So we're correcting that one, um, and I'm looking at analyzing also the sixty-two thousand down at the end of the list. HR payroll EAP. That is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a, a more appropriate uh, account for that. Okay, okay, that's great. Um, I, so I don't, didn't see anybody, uh, Barbara, you have a hand up, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I didn't have any um, significant questions. Uh, I'm looking forward to our fund balance policy later on, but I asked this question last time on Marin, I'm, I apologize, I can't remember the answer. Under uh, the gifts and donations, uh, the, the Friends of the Runner Park Library, I just got off a meeting with them. They continue to make uh, contributions and I, they continue to show in here as a balance. And I know you were, it was butt, butting up against some sort of cap or something. I think the budgeted allowance. Wondered if you were, if this will continue to look like this or you have something in process to show that these monies actually have been spent and they're not. I appreciate that question, uh, Commissioner McKenzie. Um, so um, 
there will there there have been some outstanding uh, because of the ca the cap that we bumped on, up against. Um, uh, we have remedied that. We're you know pay the outstanding uh, invoices, but they're very minor and they're across the board um, at different uh, branch from different branches. Um, so this has uh, prompted in, in speaking with um, the, 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 the public services is that um, historically, I guess some you, you know, years past, um, these were better reconciled, uh, the gifts and donations. And so there, there is a need um, to reconcile these accounts. Um, and uh, we've had a discussion and a plan um, to uh, work more closely with the friends um, in terms of providing, and also with, with our fund development director uh, to provide uh, more regular report, to start providing regular reports to our friends um, groups so that uh, we're all on the same page and uh, have the same understanding of how much was donated uh, to the library and what, what the funds were spent on and what the balances are. So it's been a number of years that reconciliation, a proper reconciliation has occurred for these funds. But now with um, our new fund uh, development director and a CFO and recruitment of uh, new accounting staff, we're gonna um, we're gonna have um, the bandwidth and the and the uh, focus on these items that are important to us. Barbara, you're on mute, but are you okay with that? I am, and I appreciate that. And I know the friends groups will really appreciate having a report. In the past, uh, way back when we would periodically, the, when I was on the friends board, get a letter from the director saying, you know, thank you for your fifty thousand dollars for new books. And I haven't even seen anything like that for a long time. But uh, I think a, a report, because um, the, the friends groups are well, I can't tell for sure, but certainly, you know, the friends group I was just in are donating significant amounts of money. They're just buying. Uh, some major equipment for the Rona Park Katadi Library coming up. And uh, so just to see that in writing and, you know, yes, it is I, a great thing. So I'm looking yes. forward to that. Thank you. I trust that uh, that the funds are being used um, according to, you know, the specifications. It's just that we, we, we need to uh, work on, on those reports for everyone. Yeah. Right. Thanks so much. Okay. Any, Myrna, any, any sense of when you would expect that uh, reporting to be more current? Well, um, <laughs> it's, it, it's been a number of years I, since I, uh, this has been occurring. So we need to look at the process and procedure, but um, uh, we have started on the process. So I don't have a, a target date at this time. Okay, I'm just going to ask that um, you keep us, uh, I, I, I'm not trying to put pressure on you to immediately resolve something that's been going on for years. I'd just like you to please give us a sense of when you think it will be cleared up, okay? So you can come back and report to us on that. Um, Craig, I notice you're on. Do you want to add anything on this topic? Uh uh, no, only just to support what Myrna's been saying and that I was involved with those meetings. And it's, uh, we want to have a report that monthly shows all the contributed income in the organization, friends groups, foundation, uh, and all the rest of it. And that's really what we're working on. And we have now the software that makes it possible. That's great. Okay, thank you. Dave or Tom, do you have any questions about the financial reports themselves? Dave, you're shaking your head. Tom, you're okay? Okay. So I have a question for the committee. Um, I know we, we had touched on this possibility earlier in the year when uh, Myrna was newer to the organization, but now that she's been here for a while and we're seeing the, kind of the consistent quality of the reports that we're getting, my question to you is, what is your feeling about how frequently the finance committee should review and scrutinize the financial reports. Do you feel like this should continue to be monthly 
or would you be comfortable if we were to go to a bi-monthly or even quarterly approach? I just quickly wanted to hear from everybody on that. Dave, go ahead. I prefer to stick with monthly. Um, I get a little nervous if it goes much beyond a month. Okay, thanks, Barbara. I think it's our responsibility to look at, at monthly. And um, I would also say that I I'm, would encourage uh, possibly a, a more concise reporting system. I've talked about that before, rather than us running down to the library and getting these great big sheets of paper. And um, anyway, I, I've talked to you a little bit about Andy and I haven't sent you the, the old style, but I, I would like to bring that issue up at some point in time. But I think definitely we need to, it's our, it's our job to look at these monthly. You're saying not, monthly, but not necessarily it, to this level of yeah. detail. Well, okay. and, and, and certainly, you know, just available to that. It's our responsibility to look at these when, and have the CFO available for questions. We don't have to take, you know, you know, maybe as much time, at, you know, line, line by line, but yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom, your view. Um, I agree that we need to do this monthly. And there, there are two reasons. I think the entire commission has really heavy primary duty to be reviewing the finances on a very regular basis. And I would feel remiss of not getting a, a monthly uh, report to the, to the commission. And then if we're doing that, what having it reviewed ahead of time by the finance committee is, is it creates a situation where they feel comfortable that people who actually are looking at this month after month in detail are comfortable with it so we save time at the commission level instead of having a lot of questions there. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, your perspectives and we'll continue uh, looking at it monthly. And Barbara, if you do want to connect with me offline, uh, I, I, I'm sure, I, I don't want to speak for Myrna, but I'm assuming that uh, she would be open to considering a less comprehensive format for the reports if it's something we can agree on. But uh, let, let's you and I take that up offline, okay? Uh, I'm going to move on to item 4.2, the budget workshop debrief. Um, I, Mirna, I'm going to turn this over to you, but I just would like to say uh, to uh, Mirna and Ann and uh, I see Ray and Craig and Suzanne are also on, uh, on the call, Personally, I was I was very happy and impressed with the budget workshop. I, I thought staff did a great job of uh, presenting the budget in a way that was meaningful, that that highlighted the uh, connections to the reimagining plan, that that clarified or continued to clarify the use of sales tax dollars. And I really could not have been happier with the way that the uh, information was presented to us. So thank you all. I know there was a ton of work that went on behind the scenes. Um, Myrna, over to you. Great. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, a, 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 there, are, there is a lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of resources it, for any organization the budget season <laughs> is very busy, um, but that's that's uh, that's the way the budget works. Um, and I was happy that um, the division managers were able to make a presentation so that you all can um, you know ask your questions about operations and the budget. Um, thank you very much for your guidance as well from the finance committee as we were checking in. Uh, really appreciate that to make sure that we met you know your needs and expectations for the budget workshop. And I hope that um, going forward. You know, we could keep this uh, this format and, you know, like anything, always room for improvement um, or changes, modifications uh, so that uh, it, it's it's always fruitful. Um, I want to thank Anne for her direction on this and um, and every, everyone. I, Ray Holly uh, stepped in and helped quite a bit for the presentations. Armando Vigamontes as a consultant to make sure that um, we presented uh, appropriately. 
and uh, Jen and Jaylene uh, also, and uh, my staff person who jumped in last minute, stayed late uh, to help with the binder, uh, Carolina. So uh, all hands on deck certainly was a lot of help. Um, the, on May 2nd, uh, regular commission meeting, uh, we uh, said that we would uh, provide responses to open questions. So we, that is uh, underway and um, we will provide that information to you on, on uh, the second. Also there, um, during this time, there could be some technical adjustments um, that will be rolled up into the budget, um, but that you will see. Um, in, uh, in June, but it, they won't be a surprise. So for example, uh, what we're doing today, we're looking at today uh, under the establishing of reserves, it's part of the budget so that you have, uh, we, we can use those reserves in next fiscal year. The other is um, some adjustments to positions. So for example, um, accounting is looking at restructuring um, so that we have the skills uh, and experience needed um, to move forward on these important items um, that have, haven't had the attention uh, that they merit and need. Um, and the other is um, a couple of other divisions are looking at uh, some modifications that net to zero or very close to zero so that um, branches are, are staffed appropriately. So those will come in May. Uh, and so they'll be rolled up and carried forward into the June uh, budget. But I will delineate those in June so that everyone knows uh, what transpired since the budget workshop. You'll delineate in June or you'll delineate in May when you present? In May and then in June so that okay. you're clear what, what transpired. Okay, thank you. I see. Uh, Dave has a hand up. Dave, you have a question for? Uh, yes, I uh, really hope we can keep the same format going for the next few years because Measure Y is almost upon us, the renewal. And I think we should be able to show the public exactly how the funds are being used over the next few years. So. Uh, agreed and thank you. Um, well, that's that's great. So I, I, I understand that we'll be seeing some uh, relatively small adjustments uh, at the May commission meeting. Uh, I think it's great that we'll have time to discuss those if necessary. I'm just gonna put this as, an, as a note, uh, please, Jen, that if necessary, we can discuss them in more detail at the finance committee next month. But based on what came up at the budget workshop, I'm not expecting uh, any considerable controversy. I, I, I think it's, uh, it's the fine tuning that you outlined, Myrna. And um, I'm hoping that uh, at the end of the May commission meeting, we'll have a, a good sense that everybody's uh, on board and enthusiastic about the uh, budget. I do want to, yes. I'm sorry, uh, I, I do want to note that the um, Measure Y Oversight Committee is meeting on Monday the 26th. Is it the 26th or 20, 25th? And I, I, I plan to present uh, the budget overview uh, to them so that they're familiar with that as well. Oh, that's great. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. Um, any other questions or comments uh, on the budget workshop? Barbara, I see your hand there. Yeah, I have expressed my compliments but I wanna do it one more time. I just remembering last year at this time, we didn't have any reports. We didn't have these worksheets. I mean, we just had so little to work from. It was very frustrating. I lost a lot of sleep last spring and this was just fabulous. It was just, a, it was, I'm so impressive in, in every possible way. I agree with David and, and Andy, obviously, and Tom, I'm sure we all just were, this was the kind of budget workshop that we've needed and, and it was there, it was in every possible way. And uh, the, the um, workbooks were great to have at home. I think I've commented on that before, but everything made sense. It was coherent, tied together with our strategic goals and everyone involved needs a big pat on the back and, and compliments from I'm sure all of us because it was, it was super. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, very well said. I can't add anything to that. 
Um, let's go on to item 4.3. Um, sorry to jump the gun on this a little bit, uh, Mirna, but I know this has been an ongoing uh, process for you as, since you've taken over. Uh, please give us a, a quick update on, on where you are and uh, what you see as the next steps. Well, uh, these, these items uh, you have already touched on in the monthly reports. And um, so we'll be making those changes and you'll see them uh, starting next month. Um, there has been a little bit of delay. As you know, there's been other priority projects like the budget. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll delineate those in the next um finance committee for you so that you can see um, and that we we're working on on making sure that's consistent. Okay, that's that's great. And I'm assuming uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping and assuming that with the work that you're doing now to uh, get these expenses properly coded, that we should uh, following the end of our fiscal year, be able to move very smoothly into the audit process without any unnecessary delays. Is that your anticipation? Well, um, the the audit process it's it's all part and parcel of uh, coding and the year end process that feeds into our audit. So um, you know, making sure that we're we're timely. Um, encoding, but also doing all the transactions, et cetera. So it's, um, it's the year end that we're already working on uh, to make sure that we have, we're cleaning up the coding, but making sure that we uh, tie all loose ends, uh, doing our accruals, et cetera, to be pre prepared for uh, our audit. So we're on track. That, that's great. And I, you know, I appreciate you doing that. I don't want to belabor it. I just want to say that after, after the, the experiences of the previous year and all the work we had to do to catch up, uh, I think it would really help to uh, continue to inspire confidence among the commission and the public generally, if we're able to, you know, move through the audit without any delays. So thanks in advance for what you're doing. Um, without further ado, I want to move to the topic that I know Barbara is very eager to, uh, to discuss. And it, it, you know, Barbara, what do they say? Good things come to those who wait. I feel like you've been waiting uh, a, a long time. You have been uh, carrying the banner uh, uh, with regard to the fund balance policy. So uh, uh, with, without saying any more, Mirna, if, if you could take us through, uh, I, I, I really appreciate what you've done here in, in laying this out. I'm going to let just let you talk us through it, if you would, please, and we'll take questions from everybody when you're done. Sure. So uh, over the last few months, uh, um, you know, we the, the finance committee. Uh, and uh, every month uh, have been asking for an update on the creation of the um, of uh, reserves that are uh, allowed under the the uh, fund balance policy. And uh, so staff has established these reserves uh, for the financial sustainability of information technology, facilities, assets, and the capital improvement program. Um, so these reserves um, need to be established in the current year so that they can begin to be used in the following fiscal year. And um, these reserves, the use of the reserves were presented um, in the FY22 budget and discussed at the budget workshop on April, uh, April 1. Um, so there were, four reserves that are that were established and the capital improvement was updated. The four reserves that were established were the major maintenance com, um, committed fund balance uh, for facilities, uh, IT reserve replacement um, fund, fund balance um, for IT 
PCs and um, and laptops and also small equipment. Then there's the IT capital replacement com uh, committed to fund balance. This is um, for capital assets under IT, such as large servers um, and other equipment that are $5,000 or greater that are capitalized. And uh, lastly is the vehicle replacement uh, reserve to, re the, um, to reserve funds when uh, vehicles need to be replaced. So those are the four uh, reserves that have been um, established. And as you can see in this table, um, it shows what the amount that was established and set aside in each of those reserves, the total. And they were the and how and that property they're allocated both to property tax and sales tax. Is this? I'm sorry. Is this the table that uh, we're seeing now? Is that the table you're referring to? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and thanks to uh, whomever's driving that. I think it might be you, Jen. But thanks for enlarging that a little bit. Okay. Um, and so also in this chart we see what is being requested for next fiscal year. So, at, for example, in, in the major maintenance fund, um, out of the 565, we're requesting 440 to use next year. And out of the IT um, uh, resource replacement fund, we're requesting to use 260,000. Um, we're not requesting to use um, IT capital or vehicle um, for next year. And under the capital improvement fund, if you go back and look at uh, your statement of activities, there, there had been $273,000 set aside under property tax for capital improvement. And um, so that was reevaluated um, and we used uh, the draft uh, facilities plan, um, master facilities plan to, to uh, determine the, the, the funding level. And so the total reserves uh, uh, is $9.3 million. Um, and we're proposing to use $6 million of that next year. The remainder are for set aside for future projects that have been identified in the um, uh, master facilities plan for refresh projects. Um, so needless to say, there is an impact on the fund balance, uh, given that these reserves are being established with available fund balance. And uh, so accounting for all the total revenues and expenditures and the creation of these reserves, um, as well as the fully funding this, the stabilization fund, the estimated ending fund balance available for budgeting is as follows. Um, so for 21-22, uh, property tax uh, is, these are estimates, right? Um, depending on how uh, final revenues and expenditures come in at the end of the year, but everything remaining the same as of uh, February, uh, we estimate the fund balance under property tax to be 8.1 million and under sales tax, 6.1 million. So just an aside, Jen, we're on page 22 now. Uh, Right. Okay. Thank you. And um, in uh, FY twenty two, property tax uh, is is a, for next year. I'm sorry, no, sorry. For next year, we estimate that property tax fund balance will be at seven million, and sales tax would be at six million. Um, again, these es these estimates can change with variances of revenue and expenditures in both fiscal years. Um, the other caveat is, um, you know, for example, we know that uh, we've already met our budget target for fiscal year 22 under property tax and any new receipts for the May of 
between now and the end of the fiscal year um, would be additional revenue that would be a surplus. So, you know, I already expect that 8 million will be changing depending on how much additional revenue we receive. So um, that concludes my overview on, um, on this. I have one question and then I'll open it up for questions from other members of the committee. As we saw back uh, at the very beginning when we were reviewing the summary report, while our uh, income looks to be at least at budget for property tax and potentially a little bit above for sales tax, our expenses uh, are considerably less than budgeted, especially in capital expenses. Do these numbers reflect your best sense of what the reality is going to be at the end of the year? Or if, in fact, three months from now, we have not expended all of the money that had been budgeted, would that also increase the ending fund balance? Uh, it would increase the ending fund balance for under sales tax. Okay. Uh, that's where the majority of capital right. projects are budgeted. Right. And that could be, so I'm just looking and I don't, I'm not asking you to come up with any numbers, but I'm just looking at the fact that we're three quarters of the way through the year, but we've only spent about 15% of our capital expenses budget. So I'm expecting that we're going to end up with some additional dollars there. Tom, I see you have a hand up. Well, if you're all done with that topic, I have a slightly different question. We have a fund balance policy where we have what I will call the emergency fund we create that's supposed to be 15%. And I'm not sure I've ever seen that as a line item in a budget. Is that reflected somewhere or is it other things that we just add together and have them in our mind or how does that work? It is, it is clearly delineated in the statement of fund, fund activity. So um, here, this, the, the table that you see in this report shows um, increases and decreases to that statement. And so, for example, you will see um, uh, all of these adjustments that we've made uh, were, did impact the stabilization fund. So um, the, you'll see that there was a, a, a adjustment uh, for um, under uh, property tax and also under sales tax. And you will see a lot, if you look at the monthly reports, there are uh, line items for the stabilization fund in this statement. In what we have before us today that we already went over? Yes. So if you wanted to. Why don't we, uh, Jen, can you bring us back to page uh, three of the financial reports, please? Uh, the statement of special fund. Yeah, there we go. And uh, down a little bit. Uh, yeah. You can see the asterisk uh, fund balance committed to rate stabilization. But to Tom's point, Myrna, um, that does um, that shows a budgeted amount, but doesn't? Uh, uh, are we we're not seeing we're not seeing anything that reflects uh, any year end changes based on what will have actually been. Not right. So yeah, currently we do, we have not made any changes to, um, to expenditures. So to your point, Andy and uh, I'm, you know, Commissioner Elkin and uh, Hauser, um, like I said in, 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 uh, in the report is that these are our best estimates with the snapshot of, uh, um, 
February and given any you know additional changes in revenue receipts or expenditures these these will change and yes uh, I agree that um, in their capital they are we may see a big um, under under underspending in that area so for for the sales tax fund balance under sales tax we may see a uh, a, a, an, an, a jump, an increase in the available fund balance. Fund balance, okay. But, you know, I, for, for my point of view and is also that you, that makes available one-time funding for, you know, the, the master facilities plan and any future projects that um, you may, that the commission may prioritize and use these funds for. Okay. Tom, does that address your concern or did you have something else you want to ask about? I'm going to look at it some more. I'm just a little confused. I'll get back to you if I'm having trouble. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of numbers here. So um, I'm more than happy to take any questions if you have, if you want on a call or an email. Barbara? You're on mute. Sorry, sorry. Um, so is it a proper thing to say, uh, Mirna, that we put aside all the money we need to put aside based on our fund balance policy? We've put aside money for our reserves and uh, into these particular um, capital accounts. So all the money's been put aside. And so then the bottom line that doesn't really show in this report as clearly as it does on that other one we were looking at shows the, the available money that's available to budget in this coming budget, but we're not seeing that reflected yet in that report. Is that a summary of what? Um, in what what report? Okay, the, then the next one, the, where we were before we flip back uh, to I, this I, On page 22 of the packet, right, Barbara? The... Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, I didn't print the packet out this time, so yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. the one that you're referring yeah. to, right? The, so the bottom end. line, yeah. So the important line there is available for budgeting. So that is amount to be spent, can be spent, all of it. If we could budget for all of it because we put aside our reserves, we put aside our capital accounts. Back to I think what what Tom was was getting at. Sure. So, so when we will when will we see the budgeting the amounts? Uh, that we're budgeting to you. Uh, <laughs> when will we see these uh, fund balances that's available for budgeting? When will we see the budget amounts reflected in that report? Okay, so you can see it now. So if you could um, scroll down, um, Jen, so that we can see the fiscal years. Uh, that same table, the statement of special fund activity. Okay, so here, this is the first table shows fiscal year 21-22, right? For property, under property tax and sales tax. And this shows the establishment, establishing those reserves. So for example, the first one, uh, IT resources committed to the committed fund balance. So we have set aside, um, right. if you add these two, it's the 900, 25 or 900 something thousand, right? So, and so on and so forth. So these monies have been reserved for that purpose only. So right. as you can see, there they're, they're decreases to, to the fund balance. And so at the end of fiscal year 21, 22 under property tax, we will have $8.1 million available fund balance for budgeting. Right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We put aside all the money that we're we talked about putting aside in our reserves and in our capital account. So that is available for budgeting. Correct. If we yeah. scroll down, you scroll down, Jen. Now you see fiscal year 22, 23. Mm -hmm. And now okay. we're using those reserves. That's what those adjustments are, right. where it says decrease IT resources committed. So in fiscal year 22, we set aside the money. And now we're tapping into it. We're drawing down on it in year 20 in next fiscal year. So 
so the bottom line there then is that bottom, the two fund balance available for budgeting, seven million and six million, those are still gonna be there after we pass the budget in at our June meeting. Is that of course? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that, that so then it is would be proper to talk about the further use of these fund balances because we have put aside our reserves and we spent the money and you know we put it aside for the budget stuff so when that that's when we talk about at some point in time putting aside money for headquarters building or furnishing roseland or paying down our liabilities and that kind of stuff and so when would you see that we would have a conversation about further use of that um <laughs> I'm going to jump in here, Barbara. I think we're going to have a conversation about that in a few minutes. Okay, thank you. Now, I appreciate. I, I really appreciate you bringing it up, uh, Mirna. I'm not uh, I'm not putting you on the spot, right? This is what you were planning to. Yes, to I wanted to speak yeah. to. So, just one point. So, for example, you know, Commissioner Elkin. Um, Jen, if you don't mind showing fiscal year 22, 21-22 again. Yeah. Okay, so here, as you can see, capital expenditures right now, we're expecting this, according to this, that we spend $4.8 million in capital projects, but we know that we may not spend all of that. So depending on where we land under these capital expenditures, the, the, um, the fund balance will, will vary. And that's how you know, I've made sure I noted that and caveated that to you all. But it, it would, if we're not, if we don't spend the 4.8 million, that means you're going to have more available to you for, for, for budgeting. Right. But to be, but to be clear, Barbara, I, I, I just want to be sure that your, what I'm hearing is not so much questions or concerns about what is being done here with the establishment and funding of these different reserves, but rather what's coming next in terms of utilizing the funds available for budgeting. Is that what you're asking about? Yes, that's what, what I'm asking about. I just make yeah. sure that we're all clear that, that that we have put aside all the money that we need to put aside and we still have a rather extraordinary amount of money here to talk about. Well, this, this I, I'm just gonna say this feels really prudent to me and I'm, I'm you know, first of all, uh, and Dave, I'll get to you in just a second. Barbara, I wanted to give a shout out to you because you have really been carrying the banner for this uh, with regard to fund uh, balance policy. And uh, I, I feel much more comfortable with the establishment and funding of these various reserves so that we're not suddenly caught short when there's a problem with one of our vehicles or when we need to replace uh, servers or laptops or, or anything else that we know is not gonna last forever. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, I uh, I'm thinking how to express ending fund balance available for budgeting in ordinary language. To me, this is our accumulated savings. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I would say accumulated, undesignated, or unallocated. Right, undesignated savings. savings. Yeah, it's like because okay. we have other accumulated savings that we're designating. Yep. This is additional savings that have accumulated through a process of uh, budget surpluses and are still available for us to wisely use in the interest of the public we serve. Um, Tom, you, I, you're still looking thoughtful. Do you have any questions <laughs> you want to ask at this point or do you, are you, oh, oh you're okay. Um, so any, uh, personally, I, 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 I really like what has been done here uh, and it's, it's great to see. Any questions or concerns before we move on to the next topic and talk about uh, that ending fund balance available for budgeting? Seeing none. Okay, let's move on to item 4.5. Um, and let me just, I'm just going to say a couple of words before I turn this over to uh, Myrna. 
I thought we had a very good discussion last month about the possibility of making additional discretionary payments to uh, bolster the strength of our pension plan. There were a lot of good questions, concerns, uh, different suggestions. And, and one of the suggestions was, hey, before we even get into what are the relative merits or potential drawbacks, what kind of money are we talking about? What might be available to fund addition, additional discretionary payments should we decide to go that route? That was one of the questions. I think that was yours, Barbara, but I'm not entirely sure. And uh, Myrna has done a lot of work. And so I'm just gonna turn it over to, uh, to you now, Myrna, to take us through this next item. Jen, I, I will be sharing my screen. Can, do you see my notes? Uh, we we will. You'll want to switch. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, so um, we've been talking about um, our actuarial accrued liability um, under CalPERS for the pension, um, and so I provided this summary um, based on the actuarial report that Bartel presented to the Finance Committee in February. Um, so CalPER um, um, actuarial analysis based on the February 11th report um, has projected unfunded liability for 2021 of $7 million. And I'm just using a slide from that report that shows that. Um, there it is down at the bottom, projected unfunded accrued liability on 6-30-2021, million. Uh, here's just another graphics because I like graphs that show this. So if you see uh, this gray bar, um, that's the actuarial liability uh, total. And um, the green is fun, fun, what the library has already paid into that liability. And so there's this gap of $7 million of unfunded liability. And um, I was asked to present advantages of making additional discretionary payment and ADP toward the unfunded liability. And some of these advantages of paying down the pension liability are it reduces uh, pension, uh, reducing pension debt helps stabilize future costs in terms of contributions. Um, so it can become more expensive in the future uh, as if we don't address um, the liability today. Um, also reducing pension debt helps en ensure operating revenue go to core library services. So for example, um, when, we, when, we, it, when we create a, a 115 trust that would be used to pay down the unfunded liability or our, our liability costs, um, we, we, we will free up our core operating revenue. And, um, and so, especially during, you know, the economy has its cycles ups and downs. And so if revenue, you know, were to dip or stay stable while the cost of doing business increases, the library could tap into the, the trust, the available funding in the trust, um, and then preserve the operating revenue for maintaining ongoing services and not have to cut services, for example. Um, this is a comparison of the discussions that the committee has had was whether 
to create a supplemental trust or to make a payment directly to CalPERS to reduce this unfunded liability. And these are some of the uh, uh, comparisons. Um, the library already has a 115 trust for OPEB. And um, those, those what we've seen some of the benefits from there is that um, the funding is available to the library and at its discretion. Um, and it's so it's flexible in that way. And how much the library wants to tap into it, if and when and how much. So all of those are in, in the discretion of the library to make whenever the library decides to tap into it. Um, however, uh, because uh, there is a likely lower long-term return because there's, it's compared to CalPERS that has billions of dollars, uh, um, a few million dollars um, in comparison will generate a lower return. Um, investment strategy choice. Also, there's more discretion um, on behalf that the, the library would choose what uh, investment strategy to take. Um, also, um, it does not it does not reduce the overall pension liability. But on the other hand, uh, it does show as an asset for the library. Uh, when, uh, and you've seen this in the audited financial reports um, and it's more visible. So it is very clear because it is an asset, we are required to delineate um, our, tr our assets in our trust, um, in our audited financials. The CalPERS option is the direct payment to CalPERS. Uh, those payments are locked in, you put them in and those yeah, that's it. Um, you don't have any flexibility to take them back um, or how to use them. Um, there is a higher long-term return because of the um, sheer uh, size of the assets of, of uh, CalPERS. Um, when we make a direct payment to CalPERS, right, the library doesn't have the choice. It just has to go with what CalPERS governing board has set. And, um, but it does reduce directly the pension liability uh, for reporting. And uh, there's just a few more restrictions on, because of all of these things, more restrictions um, when a direct payment is made to, to CalPERS. So if the Library Commission were to decide uh, or want to think about a, an additional discretionary payment, where would that money come from? Um, and the fund balance is a feasible, prudent um, uh, funding source for this because it's considered one time. And for example, how would you use the fund balance? Um, this is an example for, for your um, consideration is that the commission could say, well, we'll set aside one third of the available um, Fund the fund balance available for budgeting. And um, you could set aside one third of, uh, of that fund balance to pay down the liability, another third to uh, you know, help replenish the reserves uh, for I, you know, th th external I, things that uh, impact budget and revenues. And another third could be set aside for potential future projects, right? We haven't seen your facilities plan. Um, so then, you know, you, you, know, you might want to set aside additional funding for, for your capital improvement program. So these, this is an, an, an idea that I feel is, is responsible and prudent um, for the use of fund balance. So using this one-time money, the fund balance, um, you could use the property tax fund um, and uh, I, applying this, this, uh, this example to your fund balance now, uh, the fund balance like we saw, saw earlier is $7 million. 
Um, and this um, and this is already after right is uh, fully funding the stabilization fund, setting aside the reserves under the fund fund balance policy, as Commissioner McKenzie was discussing. Um, you know, if we set aside one third for the one time future projects, uh, well, let's just say one third for the additional discretionary payment, which would be two point three million. That would leave 2.3 million uh, to bolster the stabilization fund and another 2.3 million for potential future projects. So I, I wanted to provide this framework for your discussion and questions. Thanks very much, Mirna. Barbara, I, go ahead. You're on mute. All right. Can't get that right today. My well, my first question would be that your example, uh, Myrna, is just using the property tax un, uh, uncommitted, and so we also also have the six million dollar sales tax, also. Right. Right. Yes. So, did you would you make the same uh, suggestion of the the third third third, for example? I mean, I think. I think one of the things like, um, you know, David was asking, well, is, is the fund unrestricted fund balance the same as savings? And it really isn't because our savings is our, our reserves, the rainy day reserves, which we already put aside. And I think to, to the, the thing that's kind of hard to get your head around is we actually have 7 million plus 6 million, there's $13 million. After we put everything aside, we still have $13 million of which we're just talking about seven of it here. I mean, it's it's a lot of money that's available to to do this stuff, and in the past, it's just it's sat there. And this is the first time we're really seriously talking about about a plan. And it's kind of hard to get your head around. All of a sudden, we can really do, you know, some you know big chunks of money. Or did you have a reservation about not having a plan for using the sales tax portion? Can I jump in here, Myrna, for sure. one second? Sure. Um, um, that's a great question for a number of reasons and happy to get into this in more detail if anybody thinks it's relevant, but for a number of reasons, we felt that additional payments to the pension fund should come only from property tax monies. Um, I, I, this is not to say you couldn't make a case to do it, but because some of the people uh, who are on the staff were on the staff prior to the passage of Measure Y and were looking at years of service before the, it just, I, I asked, I asked Myrna to only look at using property tax dollars for the purpose of additional discretionary payments. Now to your question of, gee, could we further allocate the uh, fund balance of sales tax revenues to some specific purposes like one-time potential future projects uh, or bolstering the stabilization fund? We could absolutely do that. I didn't ask Myrna to prepare anything for today along those lines. Do you want to you want to add anything to what I just said, Myrna? Yes, I think um, it's important uh, to have this discussion here to see what further you would like to flesh out um, for further consideration. What I would say in terms of using um, sales tax, like um, Chair Elkin said, is that there, yes, you could make the case, um, but because, because Measure Y is uh, subject to voter approval, um, it is not a, um, it, is, it, is, it is, you know, not a permanent so a source of funding like our property tax, that is our general fund. Um, the other is that the under sales tax, um, 
uh, there is that expenditure plan, right? So the expenditure plan really targets like facilities, for example, very clearly. And if we're already, you know, looking at in, in the bigger context, our uh, capital projects, 90% of the cost of our capital projects are, we're using sales tax to fund those. Um, so uh, it, I think because of the expenditure plan and your big other policies that you have in place, um, there's already, um, we're already utilizing the sales tax for, um, for those purposes and, you know, leaning more, you know, uh, leaning more on, on the sales tax, for example, for those big, also big expenditures. Um, and this thirdly is that voter, you know, the measure Y will go to the voters again for consideration and, and voters really do support more direct services. They're more inclined to support a special tax when they know that their dollars are coming back to them in, in direct services uh, versus something um, like setting aside funding for something they will never see and someone else is directly benefiting from. Barbara, I see you've got a hand up. Yeah, I, I poorly phrased what I was trying to get at and I apologize for that. Um, I see that what we're trying to get at here was just the topic was, is additional payments to CalPERS. So I get that. And I kind of got off under the fact that we're also potentially under, under Mirna's Mer suggestion, also putting a third of it into future projects. And that's kind of where I, why I started, you know, bringing up the topic of the sales tax fund. I think this makes a lot of sense. Oh, what it is. And I believe actually I brought up the question the last time of, of paying down CalPERS because it's for a lot of it is past service and we wouldn't want to use sales tax funds for that. Nonetheless, a separate conversation, I guess for another day would be to talk about the fund balance policy uh, is establishing something like this or the $6 million in, in um, un, unrestricted funds under, under sales tax. And I think uh, to your point, uh, Mirna, about uh, voters would rather, uh, you know, fund operations. It, it also did include the tax measure, did include a lot of language about Roseland. And I think at some point in time, we've got to think about for at least the furnishing, furnishing the insides of Roseland. And that would be a proper discussion anyway to, you know, to create, a, you know, spread like this and to talk about the projects that we want to that we that we could fund like that so um i'm happy to get back on the the topic at hand which is talking about calpers and so i apologize for kind of getting making that more complicated by bringing up the sales tax but i do hope that we do talk about the the fund balance that we have in property tax at another meeting i, I barbara i think that's there's no apology necessary i appreciate the fact that you're always a couple of steps ahead of me um my thought is, uh, Anne, am I correct that we will be seeing the final facilities master plan report presented at the May 2nd commission meeting? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to think that that will provide uh, a really good basis for us to have some additional discussion about how we would want to utilize uh, fund balance uh, from sales tax dollars, because we're going to have a, I think, a pretty long roadmap of, of projects that we can undertake. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to acknowledge what you're saying, Barbara, and suggest that we just let's let's wait and see the the facilities uh, master plan, and then bring this up uh, again. But I do want to, with that said, I, I do want to circle back to the. Uh, discussion about a possible additional discretionary payment to the uh, pension plan. Um, you, you may have noticed that the next agenda item is also is really an open discussion where I wanted to get some, I wanted to share some thoughts and get some input from the other members of the committee on the best way to bring this up to the, uh, the full commission. 
Uh, I guess my question at this point is, how do you feel about the framework that Myrna has presented for utilizing the property tax fund balance? Any, I mean, any reactions, positive, negative, change requested? Uh, Tom, what's your, uh, what's your perspective? I'm not sure what you mean by the, the outline or something like that. If you're talking about taking and dividing it into three equal shares for these three equal things, I think we need to have potentially more options and uh, see what we want to do. Um, Would it be, I'm going to, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Would it be helpful for you if you were seeing, as Barbara was requesting, uh, a framework that looked at the sales tax fund balance at the same time? Oh, I think we have to. I mean, and, and then you allocate between the sales tax for certain types of things and you al ex and we allocate the property tax for certain kinds of things. And, and they aren't going to be the same very likely. So we're, we're looking at excess fund balance and how do we spend it? Or what do we do with it? Do we save it? Do we add it to our stabilization fund? Um, so I think we need to have, uh, and, and we have uh, a sales tax stabilization fund should be this, uh, there also. So we need to have all kinds of options, whatever they are, and then we can kind of pick and choose what we want to do with them. So I just want to be sure that I'm clear. What I think I'm hearing you say is that you don't feel comfortable talking about utilizing a portion of the property tax fund balance for an additional discretionary payment to the pension fund unless and until you can also see a plan for allocating the sales tax fund balance to whatever it's going to be allocated to. Is that a fair statement? Well, I, I, I'd like to have all these options in front of us so we can see how we, we how we allocate them. It's just like looking at our regular budget. I think we need to do both. And, and you know, take I can look at it this way. I think we have a $7 million deficit in the in the CalPERS. Well, the bottom line right in front of me is 7.788,000. We could just get rid of that right there by, by using that $7 million. I'm not advocating that, but I think we need to have options for how we might possibly want to use this money, both for the property and the sales tax and see what we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I agree with Tom. Um, I'm frankly not comfortable in looking at the $7 million as, whoa, look at all this we can do right away by dividing it into three pieces. I would like to, uh, you know, take this slowly um, I'm certainly in favor of making additional discretionary payments. Um, I'm not sure we want to commit to a third or commit to anything until we see the full picture, but this is a good first start, a very good first start, and it gives us one obvious one-third, one-third, one-third split, but it's our whole savings account for property tax, and that I'd rather not uh, commit to anything like that. Well, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Let me just point out that what we're seeing here, only one third would actually be utilized immediately, right? Bolstering the stabilization fund is increasing savings. Putting aside for one time potential future projects is also additional savings. There's no, yeah. we're, we're, the only thing that we would actually be dispersing if we were to go ahead, and I, I'm not saying that we're going to do that today would be the additional discretionary payment. So it's not, I feel it's, it's not quite as precipitous as you might be uh, sure. suggesting here. Well, I understand your point, but I would still, we're, I just want to see more options and I'd like to keep the percentages open. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. We're, um, we're again talking about our savings account and and we again have funded our savings account. So this is additional funding to the savings account. And it just, it brings up just an interesting question about is our, is our fund balance policy 
Correct. And we're talking about 15% we put aside. And that's uh, my understanding, kind of a, the normal number or the, the generally used number in most public agencies, put, having reserves about 15%. And so, um, you know, we have our steady stream of funding and all that kind of stuff. So if we, if, if we have our savings account already set up, then bolstering the savings account is like, well, why are we doing that? <laughs> You know, I, it's just kind of an interesting question. And, and if we are going to put more in there, maybe our fund balance policy should be, well, we want to save 20%. Um, so and it's just, it's kind of interesting. I am fully on board with additional payments on this big liability that we have. I thought Tom made a very interesting point about, you know, conceivably we could, you know, pay down the liability when this is property tax. It's not the sales tax. Again, you know, I don't want to... <laughs> act, you know, with the, you know, knee jerk reaction, you know, it, ad it adds up great and, you know, let's do it. But I think it's, we could do more, you know, than a third, you know, do we really put more money into savings when we already have our savings completely, you know, funded at this point. So um, I think it's a very good initial discussion. And, um, and I am, I think everybody, we're all on board with paying down the liability. So I want to do that. I, I would, lean toward more than that but mm -hmm. um i'm not sure how to to carry this discussion forward i, I don't think it's quite fleshed out yet okay thank well um thank you uh, so i'm gonna uh i, I think that's a good and, and Mirna, thank you for preparing this uh i really appreciate it uh i'm gonna move to the next and final item which is i think really a continuation of what we're what we're talking about here. Do you, do you mind just an additional comment? Um, Please, go ahead. Mr. Elkin, Sorry, is, I didn't uh, see your hand there. I is apologize. that, of course, this can be uh, um, structured any way the commission would like to. Um, these examples, for example, we could loosely say that we'll just leave, maybe just keep, instead of saying we will add to the stabilization fund, we just leave a balance available. So the way I was thinking of this example is that that one third to create a um, additional discretionary payment, that would be dispersed and, and deposited into a 115 trust. And the other four million would remain as available fund balance. Potentially, it doesn't have to be prescribed as such as the way this is, but there would be an additional, there would be a remaining balance of four million in the fund balance for you know, other projects um, that the commission seems um, uh, uh, believes is our priority. One being we could leave additional two, 2.3 million as a as a reserve um so um that that was my thinking i hope that that helps a little bit is that that uh only that one uh third would be dispersed the other would just remain in um the fund balance for those potential two reasons you know that 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 makes sense and look as as our as our budget increases year over year, 15% is going to increase year over year. So at some point, we will need to make additional uh, payments to the stabilization fund. Let me, let me back up a second here. And I, I just want, I want, I'm looking for an opinion from each of you. I, I value your perspective and your judgment. And I don't, have the answer to what I'm about to ask you. The question that I'm trying to, to consider, and uh, Mirna and I've had a couple of conversations about this, is how to bring the whole topic of the pension plan and the potential benefits of making one or more additional discretionary payments to the full commission without uh, overwhelming them and making it impossible to reach a, uh, a conclusion. Uh, we had some discussion about having uh, 
uh, Bartell present to the commission. I, I was unimpressed by the presentation they made to us. Um, and I, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, that will not move us any farther along in this process. Mirna, I know you were going to check and see. I, I realized I just talked to you the other day and you were off. So I don't know if you've heard anything about their potential availability. Um, have you had any additional thoughts on whether it would even be beneficial to in involve them or not? Um, well, the uh, the commission does need to accept uh, the final report right now. It's right. preliminary. It still says preliminary. So, you know, um, it could be a really brief uh, presentation, or we could just put the you know you could just put the report on the agenda. You know, for for uh, adopt you know uh, accepting it. Uh, it's 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 up to you. I don't know if they are available. I think they would be available for June, um, if you wanted them to make a presentation. So let, let's let's take it one step at a time. I just like to see if Barbara, Tom, Dave. Do you believe it would be either beneficial or beneficial and necessary, or just necessary to have Bartell present to the full commission? Barbara, what do you think? I don't think so. I mean, I I'm having trouble with my buttons today. Um, you know, I they're they're an outside firm and they get really complicated. And Myrna does a nice clean presentation, and I think is established with the commission uh, through the budget process. I mean, I think you just do a really nice job. I think we keep it simple and say we have a seven million dollar Calpers liability, and we have you know x amount of money here and my recommendation as the cfo is that we we pay this down and this is something that we can do what we haven't still haven't decided amongst ourselves is whether i because i kind of lean toward the additional payments to calpers and then setting up the stress is another another kettle of fish when involves you know investment choices and all kinds of other things so i i kind of like let's keep it simple uh okay, but i just for the but, in terms of bar time, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna. We'll come back and look at some other things. But I just want to get your initial reaction regarding Bartel. And you're saying we don't need them to present. I think. I think Mira you're, can do a, a more clear cut um, internal presentation. We have the information from the outside experts, which you can of course cite, just like you did here today. So, okay. Sorry. Okay. That's okay, Dave. No to both. I agree with Barbara. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, I, I, I don't think having Bartell confuse all of us is gonna improve just over confusing the finance committee and staff. Um, they have some good things in there that they presented, which needs to be presented to say how this happened, why it's there, uh, you know, CalPERS is over here in La La Land or whatever we wanna say. Um, and that can be ex ex taken out of it. We just accept the report and then go on saying we have a $7 million deficiency. And you know, one of the things we can say is using some of our excess um, fund balance for this purpose seems like a reasonable use. We get to the question as uh, of how we're gonna do it, direct payments or you know, 115, uh, fund and then we have also we have other unused um, fund balance are we going to have come up with a plan for using that or what and um, that's what I think we need to do we need to kind of we do need to address the whole fund balance and do we have a plan and the plan could be as simple as we're going to defer part of this until we see what happens next year and the year after. Okay. Um, so uh, th thanks, I, I appreciate uh, the, the consensus uh, seems to be, we're not bringing Bartel back to present to the, to the commission. I, I'm, I'm very glad to see that. Now, Mirna, I realize that's gonna create some more work 
for you, but I will commit to working with you off. I don't want to just stick this entirely on, on you. Uh, I, I, I think, uh, I think we do need to give a little bit of a backstory. Um, and it's not a, you know, I've been over this a couple of times. It, it, I, I think in the past, it, if we, let me frame it this way. If we look at the investment returns that CalPERS has actually generated over the 20 year period that was included in the Bartels report, it's actually quite impressive. They do a good job of managing money. Um, that said, in the past, I think they, their discount rate was too high. They overestimated the amount of money that would be earned on average. And the makeup period when there was a gap was too long. I think it was originally 30 years. And so as a result, many, most practically all uh, government organizations, including the library, uh, are now in a position where they have unfunded liabilities. Now, CalPERS, to their credit, has made some policy changes that will, over time, narrow that gap. Uh, they're reducing the discount rate to a more realistic and sustainable level, and they're shortening the makeup period so that rather than saying you have 30 years, it's happening over a 20-year period. And so that's, those are both good. I think the other thing that we have to be clear about is, yes, at the moment, we're looking at a projected deficit as of July 1st or June 30th, 2021 of $7 million. But we can't look too closely at that because the year before that, it was $16 million. And what, in fact, we're seeing is that the library benefited enormously, as did every other organization, from a period of very high investment returns, which frankly we're not seeing in the period beginning July 1, 2021. So if we were to do an analysis again after this year, it's quite likely that that unfunded liability would be greater than $7 million. So I, I I'm just saying this because I don't think we can put into the uh, mind of the commissioners the idea that, hey, we can make one payment and this is all going to go away. That's, that's not a realistic scenario. What is realistic is that with CalPERS new policies, coupled with additional payments, which we can and I believe should make, we can continue to narrow that gap and to put the library on a more sustainable footing for the long term. And I think that's a, a reasonable and attainable objective. What I'm hearing are a couple of things, and I'm saying this so we can make notes, Marina, and I know Jen will copy this. Seems like, although all of you are generally in favor of making uh, one or more additional discretionary payments, you definitely want to take a closer look at the direct payment versus the 115 trust. And I hear that and we'll need to do it. And Barbara, I know you raised some misgivings. I'll just remind you that with OPEB, those additional payments are going to a 115 trust. So you, you were on the group that originally set that up. Uh, you saw from Bartel how that change in policy has really had a positive impact. And it is going to a 115 trust rather than directly to CalPERS. Uh, the other thing that uh, Myrna and I talked about, and I'd also like to get your opinion on this, and then I know we're running over, so I'll bring it to a close. A year ago, we had the folks from CalPERS come to a commission meeting and talk to us about the benefits of using their 115 trust. Now they did that completely out of context with no advanced preparation. And as a result, I think I, I was mystified about what are we even talking about here? And I, I, I think the presentation was not as effective as it could have been. If we can set this discussion up 
and uh, this is going to take more than just one commission meeting. Do you feel it would be beneficial to have those folks come out and give that presentation again, having established a little context, Dave? No, I just okay. don't. I, uh, I don't trust these people as far as I can throw a bank book. Um, and really? I'm not opposed to going with a, a 115 trust. I'd like to go with another trustee. Thank you very much. Okay, I hear you. Barbara, Dave, Tom? You're on mute, Tom. I'm not enamored of CalPERS as great investment advisors. I think there's a lot of la la land over a substantial period of time. Okay. So you would you would you would also not be in favor of bringing them back to talk about their 115 trust? Did they, I can't remember, did they say their 115 trust was going to be better than anybody else's 115 trust? Not necessarily. I don't, I mean, I, it was, and this is why it was such a, such a bewildering presentation because we hadn't had any of the lead up to it. Um, I, I, th I felt that they were talking more generally about the additional flexibility and okay, visibility. Okay, they, they talked about that. And, and, and I still am not, I mean, we're stuck with CalPERS. We can't get ourselves out of it. And so I, I, in this particular instance, I probably would say not going with CalPERS and setting up a separate trust is, would be a cautious thing to do. I could be convinced otherwise. All right, but you're, I'm, I'm hearing you I'm say- I'm kind of prejudice. No, no, just you're you're looking for diversification in terms of uh, trustee. Yeah, that's Barbara? a good way of expressing it there. I do not think that the presentation that we received should go before the full commission. I think, but I will point I'm sorry, out. Sorry, this is hold on. This is I'm talking about the presentation the full commission got last year from Calpers. That, that didn't come to the finance committee. That was to the full commission. Well, who I well the finance committee met with those people, didn't it? Was that the full? Bartell. We met with the. We, no. We, yeah, we've already agreed that yeah. we're not going to use Bartell. I know. I thought that the presentation we that came to the finance committee. I'm almost sure, not the full commission, but when whoever it came before, one of the things they said was you can just make extra payments. It's just like paying down your mortgage. You have. 400 payments, you can pay two of them extra and it's going to bring your thing down. They, they presented that as an option. They did. Yes. Yeah. And anyway, I, again, I think it's, you know, keep it, keeping it reasonably simple. And it's and like you said, I think it's a multi-step process. I think all we I'm, need it. All I'm but, asking is, would you invite the CalPERS people back to make that presentation again? That's all I'm asking. Not the one that we saw. Not Maybe the one a simplified we saw. Okay. version, a very simplified version, possibly. Okay, thank you, Dave. Uh, no to Calpers and uh, Andy. I agree with Barbara. I'm certain that the finance committee got a presentation from them, uh, not okay. the full commission. Because if the full commission had, you would have seen people bailing out, saying they'd rather empty their kitty litter boxes uh, than listen to more stuff. Okay, thank you. Um, I appreciate this. So, so um, uh, Jen and Mirna, I'm taking away no, uh, we will not have Bartell uh, present and no, we will not have uh, CalPERS present. Uh, so Mirna, I'll follow up with you offline on the next steps. Um, appreciate very much your, your guidance on this. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep this conversation going and I'm, I'm grateful to all of you for your perspectives. Um, I have nothing else. I'm going to, uh, unless, unless anyone has a strong objection, I'm going to adjourn. Are we okay? Thank you for staying on. I know our meetings have, have run long, but we have important stuff we're doing and I really appreciate it. Thank you all. We'll call the meeting adjourned at 434. Our meetings are always entertaining. <laughs> Good night. Glad to hear that. Glad Thank to hear you. That. Thanks, Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Mira. Thanks, Anne. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.